Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here. Today I want to talk about progression betting and streak betting in Baccarat. As I've said in many other videos, there is no way to change the house edge through some sort of randomized change in the size of your bet. In fact, anytime you increase your bet, you're just going to be increasing the theoretical win for the house. So it really does nothing to raise your bet other than get the house to win even more. But there are two types of wagering that have quite uh, large followings. And so what I've done is to create an Excel Monte Carlo simulation of these two systems. So you can see what these look like in practice. And maybe if you actually get to fiddle with these systems, you'll even get more confident or gain some confidence that these systems are equally worthless at changing the house edge. So, all right, the first one I want to talk about is a so-called Martingale betting system. And in a Martingale system, what we're talking about is after you lose your bet, you double up. So if you think about losing, losing, and losing, that would be three losses. You might wager 100, 200, and 400. And so if you lost those three, that would be a total of losing 700. But since you doubled and won 800 on the fourth bet, then the net result of that sequence of four wagers is a loss of 100, 200, and 400, which equals 700, and then a win of 800, and your net result is to win 100. So the theory behind this is that if you continually double up, then when you do eventually win, you will um, win your, your base unit bet in profit. And because a win is inevitable in every real world scenario, this is a long-term winning method, according to the people who adhere to it. Now, there is one problem, well, a couple problems. One, there is no such thing as an infinite bank. And the truth is you do need an infinite bank to even begin to make sense of this method, since any number of losses in a row can occur in um, practice. And the second is that well, every casino has its own bank, its own table limits uh, of maximum wager that you can't exceed. So what I've done is to create a spreadsheet that you can try. And this assumes we are going to simulate a thousand shoes of Baccarat using this martingale where you double up after a loss until you hit the table maximum bet. We're going to start with a $100 bet. Now, as you look at this graph, the blue line represents the theoretical law. So that's simply the house edge times the total amount wagered. The red line is the actual sequence of um, wins and loss. It's your, it's your net result from having used this method at the casino. And this dollar sign right here corresponds to breaking even. So you see this person broke even through about um, mid 300 shoes before they sort of had their decline. So what we have over here is our max bet. So if I were to type in um, $100, then we would simply be talking about somebody who is flat betting. So what happens as we raise the max bet is that we will see this line get more and more jagged, but it will still roughly stay around the theoretical. So if I were to go to 1,000, then we would expect an even more jagged run. Well, all right, it's not always going to be the same thing. Well, every time you simply type a number in there and hit enter, um, it will run a new simulation for you. So here's yet another one. And so what we see is some standard deviation, some variance happening here with these bets. But overall, again, you would expect um, the, a natural distribution of results centered around the house theoretical edge. If we raise this to 10,000, we should expect even more volatility. So you see how the line is getting more and more jagged. So essentially what a progression system does is it doesn't change the house edge. What it does change is the variance or the standard deviation. In other words, you can expect a far wilder ride. You're going to lose in the long run at the house edge, but the ride is going to be crazier and crazier. So we're talking about uh, 10,000. Let's up that to 25,000, right? And we should expect even a wilder ride 
and so on. Um, let's just run another 25,000. If you run enough of these, you'll see that some are above and some are below the house edge. So um, pretty much all sorts of things can happen, which is just ordinary gambling. We expect a wild ride. If you want to inspect my code for this, just click on the RNG tab and you can see the formula that I use right up here to determine the next wager. And if you want to try your own system and you understand a little bit of Excel programming, um, then you will, uh, you can put in whatever formula you want there and give it a go and you'll see what happens. All right, let's really jack this number up now. Let's go to a million. So we are now allowing ourselves to go all the way up from roughly a um, hundred dollar bet to a million dollar bet. And we see what's happening here is that you do, when you have that size of a max bet, you do in fact win at this hundred dollar increment and you continue to win and you continue to win until your um, double up after sequence of losses hits that table max, at which case disaster happens to your bankroll. And overall, once again, we expect this to look like the house edge in the long run. Let's run another one of these things. So what actually happens as the max bet goes to infinity in a progression system is that the standard deviation goes to infinity, but the house edge remains the same. And in the limiting case, we have the ordinary house edge with an infinite um, variance in the game. All right, let's put in a hundred million. Is that what I have there? 100, one, two, three, one, two, three, and see what happens here. All right, so this is the case where we simply have not yet had um, a result that equals to a sufficient number of losses in a row to take us negative. And yes, if a casino went from a hundred dollar unit to a hundred million dollar max bet, there could be some issues with volatility that would um, interfere with, potentially interfere with their long-term profitability. But in any reasonable sort of house limit you type in here, you'll see what goes on. Um, so roughly speaking, because the standard deviation is going to infinity, it is impossible for an ordinary spreadsheet calculation to capture that. Um, so no small simulation can handle that. Uh, we would need streaks of losses, 30 or 40 in a row, and the random number generator for the small number of hands I'm generating here simply doesn't get there. So let's just go back to a thousand. Uh, let's make it realistic for your casino and we'll have a, a $10,000 max bet and you see what happens. So play around with this. It's kind of interesting to see um, how that goes. All right, the other thing I want to show you here is this tab called Streak Sim Results. So in this case, um, what we are looking at here is a, um, a, a player who is using this sort of intuitive um, follow the pattern on the table method where anytime they see two player bets, that's when they bet on player. So as long as there is a streak of players, they will bet on player. And other than that, they simply don't bet at all. And for this simulation, the easiest way to get it to run again is just to hit the save in the upper left-hand corner and you'll get another sim. I didn't want to put a button to run this because that's a macro and a lot of um, people don't want to go downloading macro laden um, spreadsheets. So if you just type in a number into any cell, likewise, you'll get it to run again. And so what we see in this case is that it really just very closely follows um, the theoretical house edge, the blue line. This is just makes absolutely no difference in the house edge to be following some sort of thing that's happening on the table. Now, if you want to play around with your own streaks and you know a little bit of um, programming, then that part will be over here. So let's see. The wager, this column right here, is where I wager after two players. So you notice under the results column, we have player, player, player. So yes, on the third one, 
I wagered $100, it came up player, so I wagered 100 again, it came up banker, I stopped wagering until I saw two players again, which are these two cells right here, and so on. So this wager column right here has to do with the progressions. This wager column right here has to do with streak betting. So if you simply edit the formulas in one of these two, you can try your own favorite betting system to see how it works. So just today I saw on a website where a player imagined a situation where he was coming into a casino where he saw a roulette table and the roulette table showed 10 consecutive reds. And that player thought surely now the house edge on a um, black wager must be more than um, just the ordinary odds of roulette. And his reasoning was that because of the um, regression to the mean, that over the long run, the number of reds and blacks have to be roughly equal. Again, a fundamental misunderstanding of the long run is often used in streak betting that, um, or people who bet counter to streaks that after two players bankers do. Um, the actual statement is not that these two values, red and uh, black or player and banker or whatever it happens to be that are opposites that you're betting on have to happen an equal number of times. That is not what the um, theory is actually talking about. What it's talking about is um, that this ratio, the actual fraction, reds divided by blacks, players divided by bankers, that that ratio tends to get close to one. Right? And that ratio can get close to one even as those two numbers are getting further and further apart, those top and bottom numbers. So uh, another thing you hear about with the regression to the mean, let me just explain. Regression to the mean does not mean that if you've had a lot of things that take you far away from the mean, then you should expect the other thing to happen more with more frequency. What it simply says is that if you have something happen that is very rare, that the next thing that happens is going to be probably more on, on the um, normal side. So for example, um, if you happen to make a basketball shot from 100 feet away, that would be a very rare incident. So your expectation would be that the next shot you take, you'll miss. It will be more towards the mean right? Whereas if you took a hundred, uh, a shot from a hundred feet away and you missed it, well, that's a very normal outcome. So regression to the mean simply says when something abnormal happens, then we can expect something much more normal to be the next thing that happens. So if you got a um, hundred, if you flipped a coin a hundred heads in a row, it doesn't say that the next toss will be um, tails or heads or one or the other with any higher probability. All it says is that the next hundred tosses you, you um, make, it is very unlikely they will also be a hundred heads in a row. That you have some, had something so extraordinary that the next thing almost certainly will not be as extraordinary. So it says absolutely nothing about numbers equalizing in the long run and that pertains to these streak methods. All right. I hope this very brief discussion has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments or just contact me directly. I am looking for material on these sorts of topics to uh, make videos about. All right, everyone. That's it from me for today. We'll see you all later.